the Lord be with you. And welcome, good morning. Here we are, it is the second Sunday after the Epiphany, and our Lord is beginning to reveal more and more about who he is and what he's come to do here. Word made flesh among us. Uh, so may this be a blessing to you and may the Holy Spirit uh, bring to you and grip you uh, with those things you need from the word today, particularly those things, those gifts and, and gospel treasures uh, that alone come from him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people, and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after the Epiphany, is from the prophet Isaiah chapter 49. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples, from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver, he hid me away, and he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the first letter he wrote to them, chapter 1. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, and that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the Gospel, according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. 
And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen, and I bear witness, that this is the Son of God. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who had heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, grace, mercy, and peace are yours. As you heard Paul tell you, from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That's how John ends the gospel that bears his name. He tells you why he wrote it. That you may believe and have life in the name of Jesus. That you may understand life as faith in Christ. That you may be part of the story. John's inviting you in. He's telling you this story is about you. That it is about Jesus giving you the faith to see who he really is and who he wants you to be in him. That it is a living story that you get to participate in by faith. And this could not be any clearer than in that opening chapter when Jesus calls his first disciples. Take a look. There are countless details, countless other details, that John could have included to tell this story of those first disciples? And does he include them? No. Because this isn't just a story of Jesus, Andrew, and Peter. No. This is the story of Jesus and every disciple. This is the story of the life of the church. It is your story. An exact description of how Jesus has found you, called you, and made you his student, and now even works through you into the actual lives of the people around you. The preacher points to Jesus. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Those who hear, follow. 
They seek, they see, and they stay with Jesus. This is the power of the word. He is active, living, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Through him all things were made. But this word became flesh. John the Baptist points at him. Look, he has a human face. The word walks toward the preacher. And the preacher identifies who he is and what he has come to do. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You're reminded of Abraham going to sacrifice his son, Isaac, his only son, his beloved son, his miracle son, the son in whom all the peoples of the world would be blessed. My father, here I am, my son. Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering, my son. The Lamb of God. The Lamb God promised to provide. He's here. And John the Baptist is pointing. The time has come. God makes sacrifice for the life of the world. And that sacrifice is his only son. He is the new Isaac. Heading for the same mountain. There will be no ram caught in the thorn by bush there by its horns, only the Lamb of God, crowned with thorns, as his cross. The binding of the Son of God is the binding, is the loosing of this world's sin. The blood of the Passover Lamb must be spread there on the beams of the wood, and he must be led to slaughter. He is the substitute, the stand-in, the one who suffers in your place, for only in him is a life apart from sin possible? He takes away sin. Not just the sins that grow out of our sin. You know, all the things we think and want and do and say that ruin life. Not just those. No, sin with a capital S. The origin. The source. Our default posture of unbelief. Jesus goes to the root and heart of our separation from God, that we don't trust him. And with this sacrifice, he takes it away. God gave his only beloved son into suffering and death to save you. Do you think you can trust him? Jesus creates a new humanity that knows the Father and obeys him. He creates a new posture of faith toward God, a faith made concrete in the discipleship of following Jesus, in a life of liturgy. My job is done here, John the Baptist proclaims. This is the only reason I was sent, baptizing, to witness to the Christ, to reveal him to Israel, to wash him for his sacrifice. That's him. The Holy Spirit rests on that man, will never leave. He is the giver of life, Forever, for I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I didn't know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, The one on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and borne witness that this is the Son of God. He's creating a new thing this new one. He's creating a new church, gathering a new Israel. That's what we said at the beginning, isn't it? This is the story of Jesus, but it is also the story of the life of his church. For the next day, two disciples are standing with John. They watch him point. They adopt his gaze. They hear him exclaim, behold, the Lamb of God. And what do they do? They follow him. They don't just physically trail after him. No, they follow him, see him, 
as their rabbi, teacher. They want to be his students, want to hold themselves under him, learn, receive, imitate, embody. No, not just a bunch of truth for their head, but an entire way for their life. The way to approach God, the way to approach others, the way to approach self, the way to understand life the way of Jesus. And Jesus sees them attending him. And so he asked them, what do you seek? They are the first words of Jesus in the gospel. Like he's asking you and me, what do you seek? Do you seek what this story tells of me? Do you think the scriptures tell the story of me? Is this the way that you desire to walk? Yes, they say to him, yes, teacher. You know the word. You are the word. We want to be like you. We want to be taught by you. We want to stay with you. And so they ask him, Rabbi, where are you staying? No, they don't want to see his bedroom. They want to know the place of his teaching, his pulpit, his altar, his liturgy. Tell us of the Christ. Show us how you are the Christ for us. End our old life. Make us new life. And reposture our hearts. Cleanse us, O Lamb. Give us new life that's lived in your spirit. The big question is, where does that happen? Where does the disciple stay with Jesus? In what place does the Son free us from sin where is he most clearly revealed to be the Son, the Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world? Yes, on the cross. The cross is his glory. Suffering for you is his glory. Dying for you is his glory. True disciples stay in the death of Christ. They kneel at the foot of the cross. They don't push away from the suffering. They accept it as his exaltation. They even share in the sufferings of their teacher when that should happen. For they know that through the death of the Son, they have communion with the Father. Rabbi, where are you staying? Come, and you will see. I want you to come. And if you come, you will see. Now Jesus is inviting you in, inviting you to participate, to join him in this story, to follow him in the way of the cross, to stay with him. And that's exactly what these two disciples do. They come, they see, and they stay. But that's not the end of the story, is it? No, the first thing Andrew does is find his brother. He has to tell someone. He has something to share. His lips now have to speak the works that, words that he has heard preached. Jesus is the Christ, the Lamb of God, God's Son. We've found him. We've found him. And so we see the liturgical life. You see, you come on Sunday morning, and the preacher points his finger at Jesus. He says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You're here as Jesus' student, growing in his way. And there you stay, stay with him at the foot of his cross and commune with him. You see his salvation. But the liturgy doesn't end when you walk out the door or when you turn off the webcast. No, your whole life is a liturgy. It moves in and out from the cup on the altar, week by week, and you 
are a walking, breathing new creation like Andrew with words of faith on your lips for everyone around you. We found the Christ. Come and see. Now you are inviting people in. Beloved, the Lord would have you understand your entire life as a liturgy. Your devotions at home to start and end the day. The greetings you make to those who you meet along the way. The work you do, whether paid or unpaid. Your interactions with others. All of it. In baptism, he has given you a new name, an eternal name. And with that name and identity comes a new understanding of yourself in him. You're part of his story. It is the living story that will not die with this world. It is the new story that is coming out of the old. Consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Your life is worship. Because that's what faith is. A life of liturgy, trusting God as we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will sustain you to the end. He's faithful, for he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. May his own spirit move you in holy liturgy with him every day, every in and out, in every circle, with every person in your whole life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the peace, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. It is time for the prayer of the church. And so... as those who are constantly in liturgy with him, those who trust that he is faithful, no matter the size of the gathering, as long as he's there with his gifts, which he promises he is in the word, he's going to hear and he's going to act on our prayers. So let us pray to him for the sake of the whole church and the whole world and for all people everywhere according to their needs. O Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Answer us according to your promises, and for the sake of Christ Jesus, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you formed your Son in the womb of your servant Mary to be a light for the nations, Preserve that light among your people. Gather us around your word and sacraments. Enlighten and strengthen us by your grace. Fill the office of the holy ministry at Redeemer with a preacher after your own heart. And grant that all may reflect the light of Christ to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of glory, the heavens declare your handiwork, and each day and night testify to your majesty. Bless all teachers and students, especially those at the Lutheran School here in Winnipeg, beautiful Savior, that in their explorations of the arts and sciences, they may see your creativity and glorify you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you watched over the tribes of Jacob, providing them both daily bread and redemption in abundant measure. Watch over the homes of your people. Bless them with all they need for this body and life. And preserve them in the glad confidence that Christ is their strength and their salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your Son consented to be the servant of rulers and to be abhorred by the nations, so that we might be redeemed by him. Fortify all in authority with courage and wisdom to govern justly and cultivate penitent hearts among them so that they may gladly prostrate themselves before their Redeemer on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your Son became the Lamb of God to take away all of our sins and infirmities 
by his death and resurrection. Remember all who are in need of your help and healing, especially Elaine, Eileen, Fran, Kathy, Lois, Edgar and Krista, Cheryl, Gianni, Tim, Elwood, and Kathy. Even those, Lord, we name in our hearts. Deliver them according to your merciful will and preserve them in the certainty that their sins are taken away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, John the Baptist first revealed your incarnate Son as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and foretold his victory over sin by the sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Prepare the hearts of all who receive that same body and blood of our resurrected Savior this day, that they would welcome him in repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that we who have celebrated the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ may die to sin and rise to new life, that we may treasure up and ponder in our hearts the Christ announced by your forerunner. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. So, you're probably looking forward to an announcement about a future call meeting here. It's, it's coming. It's coming, I'm told. Sometime in January here, they'll, they're, they're hoping to have an, an, the next call meeting. So stay tuned for that. Um, more details will be forthcoming in the emails from Jordan and in the worship bulletins he sends along. So God grant you much peace and truth and certainty and, and every good gift of the Lord as uh, we await his faithful return as he promises. Bye for now.